Teardown time. This is a Game Boy Advance. Let's uh, take a look at the silicon that's inside of it. And so why is this interesting? Uh, this is a 2001 design. It shows a really good uh, touch point as to where technology was heading. Uh, the iPhone is about seven years in the future from this design. But we're starting to see it in the consumer space, a 32-bit processor section, uh, a battery-powered unit, of course, and uh, that LCD display. There was a bunch of innovations needed on uh, system on chip with RF design and the lithium-ion battery and the digitizer that had to uh, follow this, but uh, it gives a good sense as to the computing was basically ready in about 2001. Four chips on the assembly. Let's take a look at three of them. Uh, the first one's a system on chip. It has the uh, RMA7 core into it. And then uh, just sitting on to the right there is a, an SRAM. And below that is the uh, audio amplifier. Uh, let's uh, take those parts, we can de-encapsulate them, and uh, here's the three dies all lined up from left to right. Uh, on the left there, of course, the uh, system on chip. Uh, the middle is the SRAM. And on the right is the uh, audio amplifier. Now they're not to scale, I've made them all about the same size. I'll show you a picture of how they look relatively uh, at the end of the video. But let's uh, first take a look at the uh, system on chip because uh, that is, of course, uh, the most interesting part. Uh, two CPU cores. Uh, there's an ARM7 core into it and the 8-bit uh, CPU core that says on the block diagram here. And um, what that probably is, in, is an 8051. Now, the uh, engineers took a lot of effort, obviously, to make this thing backwards compatible. I think the Game Boy started out as an 8-bit uh, system and then moved to 32. And you can see that the easiest way to do that was just to drop down to see two CPU cores. The ARM core uh, looks like it's a macro block, actually. It's been laid out there, highlighted in that portion there. Uh, to get some sense as to how much RAM and ROM sits next to it, there's a video RAM, uh, CPU internal RAM, and an AGB system ROM, uh, three large sections, and I believe those are the ones at the top of the chip. So you can see about 40% of the chip uh, is basically memory. Uh, there's a peripheral circuit, sound DMA timers, those will be at the edge of the chip, and... Uh, there's actually a little, uh, even a system ROM, I think it goes with 8051, I believe that might be there sitting there on the left, so a real good uh, touch point as to uh, the level of uh, complexity that was starting to show up uh, on the system on chips. So here's the audio die, and then to the right is the schematic symbol. Uh, it's obviously an analog process node, it's obviously the feature sets are quite large. Uh, let's see if we can sort down uh, some of the features. There's a speaker out, there's a speaker built inside the Game Boy, and... Um, if I look at the die, I'm going to speculate that the upper left there, that's a large set of transistors, probably a push-pull stage, if I'm interpreting this correctly, and that would make that the uh, speaker output. And then if we go further, that would imply the VCCs are those pins there, and uh, these pins would be the headphones out. I must have been not entirely sure. It's not lining up entirely perfectly for me, so um, I'm definitely open to... Uh, other interpretations. I'll be uh, throwing this die up onto my blog so you can uh, take a look at it and uh, give your own analysis as to uh, what the audio amplifier looks like. So here's a, a slide which has the three dies we've been looking at. Here's the uh, system on chip on the right, the little uh, tiny audio amplifier, uh, and the memory chip. So this was state-of-the-art uh, in 2000 and sort of showed the beginnings of these super complicated system on chips. Uh, which eventually, of course, are now translated into uh, to tremendously capable functions.